Hey, welcome to the last uh, presentation in the binomial group. Just remembering the binomial is a discrete probability distribution. Okay, you have separate values there. One, naught successes, one success, two successes, etc. And in this case, come down and have a look at the scale down here. The binomial uh, variable here is the number of, uh, what, heads or tails on 30 trials of the experiment. N is 30, they could have 30 successes, right down to no successes. So in this one, come up the top here again, we've got 0 to 30 possible successes. And this is the distribution of that, because here's the probabilities here. And uh, here's a possible uh, number of successes down here. So this is a binomial distribution graph. And just keeping in mind, you have, you could do it as a spike graph. And there's nothing in between the spikes here. Can you have, what's that, 11 and a half successes? No, you can't. So it's a discrete distribution. And we're going to look at, as the title says there, the mean and the standard deviation. So you might have a look at this distribution down below and say, if you had 30 trials and the probability of a success with heads and tails was a half, what would your average outcome be, if you like? Okay, so 30, you'd say, well, 30 trials, probably of a success of a half, I would say NP would be the mean, which would be 15, okay? And we've got a highest probability at 15 and a symmetrical distribution either side. Now, we saw a bit of this back in the first presentation on the binomial. Now, we're going to get, not going into a, a broad mathematical analysis of this, but as part of the course, we want to find the mean and the standard deviation. Do you remember the definition of standard deviation? It's trying to measure the average deviation of each score away from the mean. So what we do, it's the square root of the sum of all the deviations away from the mean. So this is the population parameter, so it's a population value there, over n. Okay, so uh, that's our definition of, of that, the, uh, the square root, and we should have, I should have put this down here a bit further here, uh, square root of. So we're going to sum all the squares of the deviations from the mean, average them out and take the square root. That's a standard formula for the standard deviation for any set of data. So if we have scores and probabilities here, we want to know the standard deviation of that distribution. We'll need to use that. Now what we're going to do is, just in this course now, all we're going to do is have a look at the formula we have to use and we're not going into the derivation of that. So the mean is NP and the sigma, the standard deviation square root, NP, one take P. Later on in your maths career, this becomes important if we look at uh, approximating the binomial with a normal distribution. Normal distribution is a continuous one. We'll be studying that a bit later on. Just note here, this is called the standard deviation or sigma. Sigma squared is called the variance of the uh, var variable there the binomial variable x. So when we say x is a binomial random variable, we're saying that uh, this variable can have two outcomes and the probability of getting what you want or a success is p and a, a failure, if you like, or a non-success is one take p. To be binomial, by meaning two, you can only have two outcomes and it's random. So you're going to get random variation when you actually uh, perform the experiment, which could be something like tossing a coin. Okay, do you get it? So what we need to do is to be able to, for any such distribution, find its uh, mean uh, and its standard deviation. All right, come on down now and have a look and see what you think of some of these now. So uh, a fair die is rolled 12 times, and x is the number of sixes that could result. Find the mean and standard deviation of the x distribution. So first of all, you really should say, is it binomial? 
Can you say it's to, X is distributed as a binomial with 12 trials and the probability of a success being a six? Well, yes, you can, can't you? Because here, there are only two outcomes, a six or not a six. Actually, six possible outcomes when you roll the die, but you are looking for a six or not a six, so you can make it by. And <clears throat> is the probability of a six constant? Yes, at one six. And we have a certain number of trials predetermined there. So yes, this is a binomial distribution, a binomial variable, and its mean will be NP, you expect two in 12. Okay, and sigma, here it is, square root NP, one take P, and N is 12, probably success is a six, and non-success or failure is five, six. So we expect the six to be rolled two times, twice, in this distribution of 12 trials and a standard deviation of 1.29. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for this binomial distribution, just those two calculations. What about this one? 5% of a batch of batteries are defective. A random sample of 80 batteries is taken with replacement. So we're replacing it. Now that's important. Come back to that. Find the mean and standard deviation of the number of defective batteries in the sample. So what we're looking at is the number of defective. So this is binomial because you either got defective or not. And there are 80 trials and the probability of defective is 5% or 1 in 20, and non-defective is 19. So it is binomial, two outcomes, either defective or not defective, and is P constant? Okay, well, yes. Here we are, we replace the batteries. Okay, so the probability of getting a faulty, it remains constant. That's an important property of the binomial, isn't it? Okay, so what is our statement? The random variable X, which is the number of defectors, defectives, is distributed as a binomial distribution with 80 trials and the probability of defective one on 20. Come over here, the mean of this distribution is NP, now 80 times 20, so you expect four, and then the standard deviation, variation in that, square root of MP, one take P, 80 trials, probability of a defective, probability of a good, or a non-defective if you like. And you can work that out. So there we have the calculation we need for that. So the important thing here is what would be given to you in the formula book. Now I haven't put an excerpt here, but I'll write it for you. Under binomial, We've got the expectation of x is the mean is np, and they've got var x. So that's the variance. So they give you these two. So I have no square root now. <laughs> Hang on. Because <laughs> we've squared it. So it's np, one take p. Okay, so they give you those two in the formula book. Okay, so the standard deviation, of course, which they don't give sigma of x is the square root of np, one take p. So that's not given. So just watch. The variance is the square, so you have to take the square root of it if you want to get the standard deviation. So just watch that then. So you do have some help. So you could use the formula book in doing the problems I'm going to show you now. So this is, screen clippings here are from Hayes and Harris publications. So there's question one through three. So have a go. The answers are down below. So you can fast forward if you like. Well, I'm going to show you the other question now. So just go to there. <coughs> okay, so first four little questions. It's just this little snippet in the course asking students to realise about the variation in this probability distribution and its mean. All right, come down and have a look at the um, answers to those problems now. There's question one, A and B, <coughs> or part of B. We'll just go and have a look at the rest of B. And can we fit on C? Yeah, I think so there. 
Excuse me. Check your answers there. And little probability graph there, and that's the end of them through to question four. Okay, we'll check that out. They're uh, important little questions and see what you think. And um, I think there is uh, one more uh, presentation that you might not have seen yet, and that is uh, the continuous probability distribution of the normal distribution. Okay, so I, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the binomial. Well, I'll catch you uh, a bit later on in the normal distribution. Cheers for now.